Hi, Patricia Retray here from New Revenue Consulting and Patricia Retray Real Estate. So we're here today um, to talk about social capital and how it's actually developed. And we, my guest today is Liam Corcoran from OK. So why don't you introduce yourself and tell us um, about your company? Yeah, my name is Liam Corcoran. I'm the founder of OK, which is a design company that's focused on helping people understand and develop their power particularly in the service of equity and sustainability. And who are your target audiences for that? Primarily uh, people in transition, and that's largely been adolescents in the past, uh, which is a transition we all go through. Um, but that can also be extended to lots of transitions that we go through in life, whether it be transitioning out of school or into new jobs, um, or organizations that are looking to transition from one way of thinking or doing um, to another um, and looking to really transform. Terrific. So, you know, social capital is just a huge principle that I apply throughout all of my work. And I use, I use the concept with my real estate buyers and investors, my, um, my business owners looking to grow their businesses and my community development work. And um, today we're just going to jump in after I just share the definition that I use. It's um, the sum of your personal um, relationships and networks, plus the resources derived from them, plus the behaviors associated with them that impact your health, your agency, and your economic productivity. And some of the tangible benefits of social capital include things like money, labor, and knowledge. And the intangible benefits could be things like your sense of well-being, your ability to take risks, um, and your just, just your basic uh, levels of confidence. So, why don't we jump in with that? With the critical question, how, especially with through your work with young people, how do you see them? What are the key factors that create social capital? So, I think that first of all, I would say building momentum, and we can build momentum in positive ways and negative ways. Um, but what's important to know is that it can build slowly. And a lot of us get overwhelmed, especially when we're young by the prospect of doing something big or even just making our way in life. And it's important to remember that we just need to take small steps. And so one of those small steps um, is curiosity. And starting off by being curious about the world, about people, uh, experiences, topics, um, and about yourself, You're trying to get to know yourself. And this process leads you to discover things. And through discovery, um, you create or find value. And so that could be through yourself. Um, you know, I went through a process when I was transitioning out of high school, where I spent a lot of time just reflecting on who I was and who I wanted to be. Um, and I just grappled with that and thought about it and also got curious about how we become the people that we want to be, um, what different traditions say about it around the world. Um, and so I got into, you know, um, different cultures and myths and religions, and then into neuroscience and psychology um, and all these different topics. And it was just about that curiosity of trying to figure out who I was and who I wanted to be. Um, and then we need to be curious about other people and that helps us build real connections. Um, and we need to build real relationships um, in order to do anything in life, to be happy um, and to you know, succeed and be creative. Um, and then generally being curious about the world allows you to get out there and experience new things, which are going to enrich your life and allow you to meet new people um, and allow you to learn about yourself through those experiences. So curiosity, yeah, that'd be the first one. So it sounds like curiosity really is such a central component of success in life, right? Um, it prevents you from assuming from jumping to conclusions, from failing to gather enough information to make quality decisions, right? And curiosity in 
a world where things are multicultural, right? Sometimes there are barriers to that curiosity, right? You're not sure, um, depending on your cultural background, when you're, when, what is it acceptable to ask more questions, right? And not pry, <laughs> right? Um, when is it acceptable to ask for details without it seeming like um, you're questioning the scenario, right? Um, in my consulting work, I, I always say to people, there's no wrong answer. I'm asking questions to learn. I'm not asking questions to judge, right? So just cultivating that sense of curiosity it's not just going off on your own and, and, and reading books, which is great. You definitely want to always be curious about the world, but finding um, acceptable ways, <laughs> right, to ask questions without offending other people, right? Sometimes that can be a basic challenge for, for people. Um, so what else would you say is helping um, the young people you work with develop uh, social capital, aside from curiosity? Yeah. So. I think that another big piece, which is um, hard to develop um, because it's something that we are told we should do, um, is service. Um, and that can be you know, community service or just um, small acts of service to others. Um, and some of us really have uh, experiences in our lives that help us develop that quality of service, um, whether it's through our, our culture, um, or through school or family or whatever, but being able to develop that and find opportunities to be of service um, is really important. And I think related to that is dedication and sticking with things. Um, so, you know, we can go and do some community service on the weekend, um, which is great. But the type of service that I'm really talking about is deep service, where you find multiple ways to be of service to your community, um, and you do it in a sustained manner. Um, and that allows you to go deep, to build real relationships over time, um, to understand your community more deeply, um, and understand what its needs um, and what its strengths are. Um, and it shows people that you're trustworthy, that you can follow through with things. And those are just absolutely critical to building social capital. Yeah, that is an excellent point. The idea of sticking with something, even if it's very small um, over time. And the idea that by sticking with something, you're gaining so much knowledge of the thing, right? knowledge grows as a factor of time and experience with that subject matter and the different ways it manifests in all the areas of your life, whatever, whatever it is that you're, that you're um, serving. So I think we talked about how when you stick with something and people notice, all of a sudden, even people who don't know you, they do start to develop trust in you. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Like, how is that trust built? Because trust isn't really, you know, some people think of it as this deep emotional thing, but people sometimes call me and trust me right away because they've heard about me and what I've done in the community for the past 20 years. So tell, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, you know, as someone that wasn't very trustworthy when they were younger, um, I was, I was a, I was a bad kid, um, by many, by many measures. Um, I, you know, I obviously didn't carry that into my adulthood. Um, but I had to actively, um, work against that. Um, and, and what that meant for me was I, I volunteered for a community justice center. This is an example of, of what I did um in my early 20s and i volunteered there for three to four years um and i think like by my third year they asked me to be on the advisory committee for the entire like community justice center um and i had just started off doing this because um the idea of justice was really important to me um, as someone who you know had experience had kind of been on the brink of going into the justice system and, and having encounters with the law um, and um, inequity being very um, close to my heart, it was important for me to get involved and give youth opportunities to find 
alternatives to the traditional justice system. And that was the only reason why I'd gotten into it. But then over, over time, I'd been there so long that they asked me to kind of step into this bigger leadership position. Um, and, you know, that was this result of just being there, just showing up and volunteering um, once a week for three hours. And, you know, that also then, um, those types of experiences that I had also meant that people just knew me in the community. Um, and, you know, I could go somewhere or, or apply for a job and they'd be like, oh, you know, so-and-so, or, oh yeah, we, you, you go there and you do this and I've seen you here. And, you know, um, so all these connections start to be made and you become this, you know, part of a community, trusted and respected. Yeah, and so service does not have to be a burden, right? It can really just come out of um, your interest. And even if you started it thinking, you know, this is not really what I want to be doing, <laughs> it can somehow become um, such a benefit to your life, right? And I'm so glad, you know, um, when parents force their kids to serve, I mean, sometimes a little nudging needs to happen <laughs> just to see the benefits. So let's end with a little bit of um, what we've seen in terms of what deters social, the development of social capital. Um, you know, working with um, clients and business owners, I see that I call it the four P's, right? Um, I think um, pride, perfectionism, poor communication, and extreme privacy. Those are my four P's. <laughs> that whether, whether you get that way because of your culture or um, your school, the school that you attended or the church that you go to. Um, I see these four P's a lot. And um, one that in particular, poor communication. Um, when I say poor communication, I don't mean the inability to speak. <laughs> I mean, the inability to really describe what you're talking about instead of using generalizations and kind of shallow phrases and, you know, the, the ability to really express the, the circumstance, the situation you're in um, allows people to connect more with the story. So I, you know, years ago when I was, when I first started real estate, I'd ask people, how are you doing? And some basic questions and they'd give me superficial answers. And then I realized I knew nothing. After those answers were spoken, I still knew nothing. And so, so this, if, if this habit of, and I, my mentors do this also, this habit of not just answering the question, but answering the question in a very kind of detailed, almost storytelling way, so that you're not just getting the quick fix answer. Um, and then the other, the other ones we can go on and on about, and we'll talk about more in future discussions, perfectionism, um, privacy. I know, you know, in my culture, the Caribbean culture, this idea to keep, keep your business private can also deter from developing the knowledge and the relationships and the networks you need if you if you're extremely private, you know, of course we need boundaries, but those are those are some of the things that I see. What do you see that uh, deters the development of capital, social capital? Yeah, so I think something that I see oftentimes is um, people just not stopping to reflect, um, and I think through that you can determine your circle of competency. Um, you know, understand what you know and what you don't know. Um, also where you are and where you want to go. And without that process of reflection and then setting intentions, um, we can kind of go blindly through the world. Um, we can not learn from our experiences. Um, and we can also forget to be grateful, you know, grateful for the people around us in our community, grateful for our challenges and our, um, you know, gifts. So you know, that's also a shameless plug for, you know, all the work that I do, uh, which is really centered around this process of reflection and intention setting um, and using that as a tool to connect with others. Because that way, when we do that, we can meaningfully connect with one another. Um, and so that process I see is, is really critical. Yeah. yeah, the internal process of reflection really does con connect with social capital because you can't realize value in others and resources in others if you don't really start with yourself and realize, if, you know, what, what is the value that you bring to the table? And we all do, right? We all bring something extremely valuable. Often we underestimate the unique value we bring to every situation. So I think that's a great note to end on. 
Thank you. Um, let us know how to reach you, um, Liam. Yeah, um, if you go to ok.community, that's just an O and a K dot community. You type that into your web browser, you can go to our website. Um, we're developing a web app right now um, where you'll be able to create a flower um, which holds all the different aspects of yourself and you'll be able to see it along with the rest of the world's flowers. So if you go there, you can get updates on that project, um, check out some of the other work we're doing. Um, and also you can send me an email at liam at ok.community. Um, I'm not a big social media person. I know I should be, but uh, email is a good way to reach me. Right. You're, you're too busy doing face to face. <laughs> exactly. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. That was lovely. I uh, hope to see you all next time. Uh, Capital Conversations and um, PatriciaRetray.com. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Patricia.